For as long as we've been driving cars, we've been sitting down behind that time-tested fifth wheel. But in the 1960s, Ford tried to replace the iconic steering wheel with smaller, weirder, hand-shaped mechanisms. Welcome to the world of wrist-twist driving. In 1965, Ford was coming hot off the runaway success of the Mustang. This is the moment of truth. And in its search for the next big thing, it was keen to reinvent the very fundamentals of driving. One of the silliest and perhaps least successful experiments could be found in a test car puttering around the track at Ford's Dearborn, Michigan proving grounds. Wrist Twist was developed for Ford's Mercury brand by ex-missile engineer Robert J. Rump. Having helped develop the United States nuclear missile defense system, Rumpf set out to tackle one of engineering's longest standing challenges, fixing what isn't broken. Instead of a bulky wheel, wrist twist cars would have a pair of dials that the driver would reach out and twist with both hands. Despite each dial being separate, the two were mechanically locked to twist in unison, turning a car's front two wheels at once, just like a normal steering wheel. Even given the strangeness of this design, Ford was enthusiastic about some of its potential advantages. Wrist twist was smaller than a traditional steering wheel, which made the driver's seat a bit roomier and offered increased visibility of the road and of the dashboard. It also let a driver keep their arms leisurely on the armrest for added comfort and decreased exertion. All of this made it perfect for novice drivers, as Ford explained in a casually sexist promo video from Wrist Twist's early days. With a driver who promises to be about as non-technical as they come. But how was it to actually drive? Weird, but not entirely bad. Popular mechanics Alex Markovich gave it a spin, gave it a twist, back in April of 1965, to mixed results. I felt comfortable but odd. Visibility was splendid, but I missed the support of the steering wheel. I fired up the engine and eased the Merc through the gate as gingerly as a nudist in a cactus patch. On the street, I found myself holding my breath. Every twitch of the wrist resulted in a jerk. The car felt like a kangaroo with hiccups. Markovich eventually came to enjoy the system's added sensitivity and ultimately identified himself as a wrist twist fan, but not before touching on the system's most damning flaw. When power steering goes out on a normal car, you can muscle the wheel with all your might. When power steering goes out on a wrist twist car, you better have wrists of steel. This serious deficiency may have been what ultimately did the wrist twist in. Two years later in 1968, Popular Mechanics reported that the system was not yet dead, but that odds were still against production for the foreseeable future. You can infer the rest of Wrist Twist's story by taking a look at the dashboard of the next car you see. At least, so long as cars continue to have steering wheels at all.